Magic, the vlog, episode 31, No Sleep Till Brooklyn. Hello, and welcome to week 31 of Magic, the vlog. I'm Max Phillips, and Jake is not going to be on this vlog because he died. So, in this episode, I'm going to talk to you guys about three different things, each pertaining to Magic the Gathering. The first segment, we've got a few oversized cards that I'm going to show you. You may or may not have seen them before. They are a special release from Wizards of the Coast. Um, I believe they're only given out to level 2 judges and above. After that, I've got a new little, not quite a full deck yet, but it's a little brew I've been working on over the past few weeks, ever since Return to Ravnica was spoiled. And then finally, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about my pre-release, how that all worked out for me, and I've got one card here with me, um, I'm not going to tell you what it is yet, you can find out later, and it really carried me to victory at the pre-release. I was undefeated at my local game shop. Alright guys, so, I mean, some of you probably have heard about this before, but the Wizards of the Coast has released special oversized cards, and these ones are Gristlebrand, Avacyn, and Gisela Blade of Gold Knight. So, the only way to get your hands on these is to be a part of the Judge Rewards program, and um, you do have to be level 2. Um, luckily, I'm level 3, so I'm able to access all these rewards. But basically what they are is just the same card as normal, except for it's oversized. And oversized just means it's larger than a normal magic card. So you can't put it, you can't play it at FNM or any, you can't play it in any tur sanctioned tournament. But it's really handy for EDH, like, when I show up to play my casual EDH matches at my local game shop, everyone's really jealous of my oversized cards, and I have decks for all these as my commander because they're all legendary creatures. So it's just a fun way to, you know, show off your play skill, basically, and um, bring something fun to the table when you're playing casual matches. Hi guys, many of you know me as a very accomplished deck builder, and this is one of the recent brews I've been working on. Um, it's basically what appears to be a green-white mid-range list, and it actually is a green-white mid-range list, so that's exactly what it appears to be. We have some lands down here. They're mostly dual lands. We've got Sun Petal Grove and Temple Garden. And then in addition to these dual lands, we have Colorless Producing Grove of the Burn Willows. This is one of the Slesnia promo, pre-release promos for Return to Ravnica. So I played in that event and got Slesnia. Well, I played in one pre-release event and got Slesnia. I played in like three others and did different guilds. But Grove of the Burn, Grove of the Guardian excuse me, is a really powerful card in standard format right now because you can use your mana dorks to both um, help you use the activation cost and use the tapping, tapping creatures activation cost if you have any spare mana dorks um, on like turns 4 or whatever late in the game you can kind of do that, use them for that purpose. Moving up the curve from lands we play Dryad Militant. It's a good hoser against almost every single deck because a lot of decks in standard rely on graveyards right now. We have Avacyn's Pilgrim, um, mostly just because it's a FNM promo and I won like seven of them, so I decided I wanted to use them in a deck. Right now I'm kicking around the idea of splashing black into this deck for Abrupt Decay. It would probably be out of the sideboard and it would just be able to deal with early game plays from my opponents and um, things like Boolean of the Veil, which I would have a little bit of trouble with um, if I didn't play Abrupt Decay. And our aggro really starts here on Lockstone Smiter and Centaur Healer. If you can play either of those guys on turn 2 off of an Avacyn's Pilgrim, um, it puts a lot of pressure on your opponent and makes it hard for them to stabilize. And post uh, those guys, we've got the curve at 4 and 5. We do have 2 Slesnia voice, Tristani. Um, she's really good with populating because if you use your Grove of the Guardian and make an 8-8, eight, eight, uh, creature with Vigilance, you can copy that for only 3 mana, and you gain 8 life. So that's pretty much like one of the best plays I could ever imagine. And then we do have the Restoration Angel Thragtust package. Again, I have a lot of these promo Restoration Angels that I like to flash around, and Thragtust is one of the best way, one of the best creatures to flicker with your Restoration Angel. And you can also flicker like your Centaur Healer to gain 3 life if you need it. Um, it's a slightly worse play because Thragtusk gains you 5 life, but if you don't have a Thragtusk on the field, you can just go for the healer flicker. Um, so, over the next few weeks, I anticipate fl flushing this deck out, and I'll probably play it at FNM and go undefeated. 
So as you guys all know, last weekend was the pre-release weekend for the set Return to Ravnica. It's going to be in standard coming up here on Friday. Um, basically, there are two local game shops in Ames, Iowa, the city where I reside, and each of them runs a bunch of different events. So there are probably a total of eight pre-release events that I could have attended over the course of this weekend. I went to six because I wanted to play each of the different guilds once, and then I did play Is It Twice because I had a lot of fun the first time around. And basically, on Friday night at midnight, I played in one at Mayhem Comics and Games. And I opened Jace, Architect of Thought. And this card is pretty much one of the best cards in the entire history of Magic the Gathering as a, video, as a card game. And basically, every single game that I cast it in the pre-release, it directly won me the game. And I was just thinking to myself, like... Why would Wizards print a card that's so unbalanced, like Jace, Architect of Thought? But then I remembered that it is a Planeswalker, so like your opponent can attack it if they want to kill it. Which, for some reason, my opponents at the pre-release, they never attacked my Jace, Architect of Thought. I guess they are trying to mind game me, but the joke's on them, because like it actually turned out that they were getting mind game by me when I controlled Jace, Architect of Thought. So, I was just going to talk to you guys a little bit about how Jace Architect of Thought won me so many games at the pre-release. Um, I did open him in the Friday midnight pre-release, and I opened him in a uh, Sunday pre-release that I attended. I was playing uh, Azorius that time instead of Visit. Um, so yeah, I got two copies of him. That was nice this weekend. Um, otherwise, so that's just been my experience with this card in the limited format. And uh, I think it's really good, so you guys should try it out. Um, you know, pick up four copies and just test it in your standard decks. Thanks for tuning in this week on Magic the Vlog. I'm Max Phillips, and hopefully Jake will be back for you guys sometime. I know that you guys really did enjoy his company. Um, he's just been busy lately. He's not actually dead. So, until next time, tap in the Jace.